Now, of course, on Bounce News Wednesdays, we talk the economy. Wendell Page from the Big Ben Minority Chamber of Commerce down in Tallahassee, Florida, is joining us. And, Wendell, thanks so much for coming and keeping us on, on par on what to do to keep our money safe. This is always a favorite part of my day. <laughs> we appreciate you. Now, of course, the biggest question on everybody's mind in Syria is Syria. I know you and I have been talking about it back and forth. Mm -hmm. And people are saying that if, indeed, the president does uh, get the authorization in Congress, from Congress and does decide to do a punitive strike against Syria, mm -hmm. that it will affect businesses domestically. Oh, yes. Uh, well, you know, there's a cost to, to war. Uh, there's a cost to any, any perspective, any size that you, whatever, however involved you become in it. I mean, uh, the president said there'd be no boots on the ground in this particular endeavor, but you still, there's a support mechanism that causes uh, entrepreneurs to uh, take advantage of their federal contracts. And there probably will be uh, some impact on minority businesses and women businesses nationally, small businesses, uh, that will try and take advantage of federal opportunities. I don't know that it will have very much impact on us locally other than the cost of gasoline and the cost of doing business. Uh, but we hope that uh, the president is right in his, uh, in his uh, vision and that we won't get into something like we had to deal with. That's a long-term thing. And then yes. I, I was reading something yesterday that talked about AAA saying that some of the gas manufacturers, specifically BP, were putting in uh, additional, uh, they weren't using as much foreign crude because mm -hmm. things were so un unstable. Mm -hmm. They were using a different blend to hopefully keep the price stabilized. Well, that's one of the great things about being in America, you yeah. know. Yeah. We learn from our past experiences, and I'm, I'm encouraged that enlightened and responsible corporate citizens like BP yeah. are looking ahead to what the cost of war or cost of this uh, Syria experience could be. And they're getting ahead of the game because they understand the impacts of those kinds of events on small business. Yeah. So one of the biggest stories that everybody is talking about across the country, we had in 50 major cities in the U.S., workers from fast food restaurants decided to strike. Wow, they were yes. saying they needed a living wage mm -hmm. as opposed to just the minimum wage, which mm -hmm. hasn't been changed in some mm -hmm. time. Um, mm -hmm. Businesses are saying right now that they're paying exactly what people deserve to be paid, mm -hmm. but people are saying we can't live off that. Yes. So, I mean, wh wh who's right in this situation? I mean, right now, even in, we talked about this before, in D.C., the Washington, D.C. City Council is blocking Walmart from coming because they said if you're not going to pay people at least this amount of an hour, you're not welcome in my city. Right, right. You know, this is uh, another one of those uh, American experiences that uh, that can only make us stronger. Uh, I, as the president of the of the Big Bend Minority Chamber, I'm kind of in between a rock and a hard place because I do have my corporate members, my corporate sponsors who we support as much as we can to make sure that they have the proper workforce and they have the proper vendor supplier uh, uh, databases. And so we work real close with corporate America to try to make sure that they can do business in the most cost-effective way possible. At the same time, Florida has always been, particularly Florida, has always been notorious for uh, these wages, these service industry kind of wages. Mm. Uh, even though when, when Walt Disney moved to Florida, there was always this issue of, and you know, you got a good job at Walt Disney, but they're not paying as much because it's a service job kind of thing. And so we've had this, this challenge forth, all, yeah. the, all the time. Now mm. it's become really a bigger, bigger national question. I think that it can only make us stronger in the sense that the conversation okay. that occurs between corporate America and this living wage and where America's workers are and this minimum wage will help hopefully land us in a, me a medium. Where people all agree. Where, where everybody agree that we can live a little bit better than we used to. Uh, we're not quite where we want to be, but we're better than we used to. And hopefully that conversation ends up somewhere in the middle. And the National Restaurant Association has even come back and they said, hey, what you just said, we welcome the conversation. Mm -hmm. and, and before, it wasn't really there. Mm -hmm. One of the things that the workers want in their kind of uh, litany of things that they're saying, hey, these are things we need, is unionization. Mm -hmm. um, what do you think about that? Is, is unionization necessary for, because it's a transient field. You know, you have a lot of students right, and workers. Right. So there's not a lot of stability in the fast right, food right. field, which the NRA clearly put out there. But they're saying they want the ability to unionize. Well, you know, uh, America was, was built uh, quite a bit of its history is built on unions. 
Um, Florida is a free-to-work state kind of uh, in, in historically. Um, so I've seen good in both areas. I think sometimes there, there needs to be organization in order to maximize progress. Uh, I saw the butler recently, and uh, I said, Dad Gummit, maybe the butler should have been in the union back in the days. <laughs> maybe it wouldn't have taken them so long to be head usher yeah. at yeah, the White House. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, but uh, so the, the union has its place, I believe. It does. And it has done some great things for America's workers. Um, at the same time, um, I don't think that you have to be in a union in order to progress. So, again, I'm, I'm in the middle. I know that sounds kind of... You know, both sides. But well, it I, depends I, on where you are. Because yeah, a clear I, state like Pennsylvania, a closed shop state, yes. you're, if you're working, you will be in the union. Exactly. Yeah. Exactly. So, again, I think it's a healthy conversation okay. that needs to take place that uh, America benefits from in the end. Point blank, point blank question. Mm -hmm. Is the minimum wage that we have now in the range, and some states are different. I will say that some states mm -hmm. do yeah. not follow the federal, federal mm -hmm. minimum wage. But around 775 is mm -hmm. the, the median. Mm -hmm. Is it fair? Can I use a different word besides fair? Sure. Uh, I think it definitely needs to be enhanced. I'll say that, yes. I think 775 nowadays is putting you pretty much borderline making ends meet. So it has to be some discussion. I don't know what, what the market can stand, yeah. how far above that seven, whatever it is it should be. But surely the folks at the bottom end of the spectrum can use a little bit of help right now. Yeah. Yeah. And that, that's not based on the dollar figure itself. It's based on what I see every day in the street. Gotcha. Good stuff. Thank you for sharing with us, as usual, uh, Window Page in Tallahassee from the Big Bend Minority Chamber of Commerce. Thanks for joining us.